Picture this amusement, insiders. You pull up to Canada's Wonderland for the spring opening weekend. And looming over Splashworks is an absolutely massive RMC, standing in the place of the mighty Canadian Mindbuster. How do you feel about this? <laughs> Let's talk about it. So in this video, I want to make a case for RMC Mindbuster. I know it's probably never going to happen, but let's just ignore that. Let's just put that aside for a second and talk about it because your girl likes to dream. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine. I used to go as Jasm on YouTube um, and my channel these days is called Jasmine Dreams. So you'll notice in my segment here on Amusement Insiders, there's going to be a lot of dreams, opinions, ideas <laughs> we're here to just talk we're here to we're here to put our brains off in space and think about what could be what should be what we want to be <laughs> and then talk about it so we're gonna have some awesome discussions about various topics around canada's wonderland as well as other theme parks um, but i have some really hot topics around wonderland and a couple other canadian parks that i want to start off with and today if you guys have seen me in the live streams in the podcast, you will know I have very strong opinions about this particular topic, okay? Mindbuster is a Canadian treasure, all right? Love it or hate it in its current state, that is an, a Canadian icon right there. And I just feel it would be completely wrong for Canada's Wonderland to exist without some iteration of Mindbuster. Now, pardon me while I scratch my eye. I also feel it is just wrong to have Mindbuster and not have it be a wooden coaster. That is just the legacy of Mindbuster, okay? Now, do I think that what I want is what Wonderland is and Cedar Fair are going to do? Not really. <laughs> but we're going to talk about it anyways, because we're here to dream with Jasmine Dreams. <laughs> Um, I don't know what we're going to call this segment. Feel free to throw some suggestions down below. Um, it may be a week or two before your suggestions come into play, though, because I've recorded a few of these in advance. So it is what it is. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> Mindbuster. Here we go. Now, I am not going to get deep into Mindbuster's history in this video. For those of you who have been following Amusement Insiders long enough, you'll know that I used to do ride history videos and I have done a whole video on Mindbuster's history in the past. So um, maybe Brennan can put a card here somewhere where you guys can click or like a link in the description or something. But go watch that video if you want the full history of Mindbuster. Because when you know the full history of Mindbuster, I think you'll have a greater understanding for why I don't want it to go away. <laughs> okay, there's only five coasters that opened with this park and Mindbuster is the most iconic of them, if we're being honest. I have a special place in my heart for all of them. But we can't get rid of Mindbuster, okay? We can't do that. It's illegal. I just made it illegal. Just now. Anyways, with that said, Mindbuster did open May 23rd, 1981 with Canada's Wonderland on its grand opening day. So I don't know how many times I need to say this in one video. I've probably already crossed that limit. But this is an iconic ride. This is a historic ride for this park. But, I will be the first to admit, this ride is not in the best shape. She's seen better days, you guys. And on top of that, Splashworks really, honestly, deserves more than what it has been for a long time now. Um, and there's a lot of potential in Splashworks. So there is a general redesign of that whole part of the park necessary as it is. Um, and I think this is just an opportunity for something big like a ground up RMC. Yes, I am not talking about a conversion here. I think Mindbuster deserves a ground up. So it would have to be a new iteration of Mindbuster. It obviously would not be the original. Maybe they can use a few planks of wood <laughs> and be like, the original Mindbuster's in there somewhere. Um, but I just don't think it's worth it or uh, cost wise, smart, or given the condition of Mindbuster, safety wise, smart to 
make it a conversion, but I think a ground up RMC would be wild. And to follow a similar layout to Mindbuster, to follow a similar pathway, have it somewhat interact with Splash, all of that could make for a really sweet ride, you guys. Come on! I know I can't be the only one thinking this! <laughs> I know somebody in the comments is gonna be on my side here, okay? Ground up RMC Mindbuster. It's a solid idea. That's pretty much the video. <laughs> not gonna lie, that's pretty much the video. <laughs> okay, lies, it's not the whole video. Here are some of my more detailed uh, and nuanced aspects to this thought and my justifications. So, Splashworks deserves its own entrance. Splashworks, if Cedar Fair was smart, would have a separate ticket price. Do I want this personally? No, I love being able to wander in and just go into Splashworks as well if I feel like it. However, business-wise, it's a smart idea. You're like, you come on. That said, if Splashworks has its own gate on that side of the park where Splashworks is, and it's now separately ticketed, imagine what kind of incentive it would be if like you're a 12, 13 year old and you roll up to Wonderland with your parents and they're like, we're just going to the splash park today, guys. And looming over the splash park, flying over it every couple of minutes is this RMC mind buster. And you pull up and you're like, I don't want to just go to the splash park. I want to go on the big roller coaster too. Like, sure, you're going to pull up and you're going to see all the other rides in the, in the, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> in uh, in the park skyline. You're gonna pull up and you are gonna see all those other rides in the park skyline, but a lot of those you've been seeing for years now. A lot of those you've experienced. Whatever it is that's going to pull people out of just being a Splash Parks only ticket purchase and into being a two parks ticket purchase has gotta be big. It's gotta be worth the money. <laughs> and it's got to be something very different from everything else that you already have written that may make you say, oh, we're just going to get a day ticket one day this year and then we'll get a splash ticket another day this year and we'll only come twice because then we can, you know, we've done everything. If they put in this coaster that's worth riding, because I've been on, I've been on an RMC now. I can actually speak from experience now. <laughs> I was still advocating for this like a year ago, but now I can advocate for it with experience. <laughs> um, you cannot just ride an RMC one time and fully get the experience. Like you're not even fully in it. You're like, whoa, what's going on for like a big chunk of the ride? So if you want a really re-rideable ride, a really exciting ride, a really thrilling ride that's going to make people feel like I have to spend this money to experience this. And then when they go on it one time, they're going to come off and say, I have to go on that again. I only remember the first half because I kind of like blacked out. Um, <laughs> this is the ride. This is the one. This is this is like a big draw. And there's not that many of them out there. Like it will get people to cross the border. And I want to talk about why Ground Up and how it could still pay homage to Mindbuster. So Ground Up, I mean, some of you guys have talked to me about this again in the chat during the podcast. It's a great time to, <laughs> to argue with me about things. Um, why, why a conversion would not be a great idea for Mindbuster? There are many reasons. And I would love for those of you who have more information on rides and engineering than I do to sound off on that in the comments. But my reasoning is because it would give them a lot more freedom to play with the layout because currently to try to retrack or redesign Mindbuster in any way along the current layout. There's a lot of challenges. It goes straight through the middle of Splashworks and that may not be what's best for Splashworks in the long run, but we could still have a ride that interacts with Splashworks, maybe goes around the perimeter of it, kind of plays over the entrance to it that goes in between it and the park. There's a lot of options that are opened up when you look at doing a ground up rather than a conversion. But I still think having a ride called Mindbuster, whether it's another iteration of the mighty Canadian Mindbuster or whether it's, um, you know, like Mindbuster's Revenge or like some some other take on Mindbuster. It's like, you know, the the ghost of Mindbuster, something. It's a perfect fit for a final addition to Frontier Canada. You cannot deny that, okay? Frontier Canada, like the one thing that would truly cap off Frontier Canada would be 
a badass version of Mindbuster, like a really rockin' version of Mindbuster. Two, my second justification for a ground-up RMC on this case <laughs> is the wood element. RMCs have come a long way, all right? I know they have a reputation for a lot of things, <laughs> but they've come a long way and they're these days significantly, significantly more reliable than they were in their earlier days. And I think that's going to improve with everyone that we see. And so you have something that is a lot more impressive than the current iteration of Mindbuster that we have. And on top of that, you have something that is um, able to eat up a, potentially a lot more people than the current iteration of Mindbuster that we have. Okay, I'm just going to skip to my main thing, which is in a park where you only have a couple of wooden coasters and they're both to the point where it's like not great, like they kind of got to go. And your last major thrilling roller coaster additions have all been kind of same, same in like a few ways. Like they're all, they're all B&Ms. They all have a very similar feel. There's a lot of people you could like GP, you could go in and just do like a, you know, TikTok interview and be like, what's the difference between Behemoth and Leviathan? And they'd be like, one is blue. Um, so you need something that's not, that doesn't feel the same as everything else we've been getting. And you could argue that any steel coaster is not going to have that effect. It's just going to be another steel coaster. It could look a lot different. It could be, you know, um, inverted or flying style instead of more traditional style, but it's still going to give like another steel coaster. You know what I mean? Wooden coasters are just a very different species of coaster. <laughs> They're a totally different type of experience and they can be amazing when done well. And even old historic wooden coasters can be amazing when maintained well. I just think ours are past that point. And so we have to do something kind of modern with them that fits Wonderland. Um, and I don't know if going with all wood for both of the two big ones, big ones, like I say that like they're big, they're not. We're talking about Mindbuster and Wild Beast here, come on. But my, what I'm trying to get at is one of them I think we should keep as a traditional wood coaster and the other one should be a hybrid because a hybrid I just think is a really good fit for Wonderland's crowd. People, if they saw an RMC, especially, <clears throat> especially all this talk we've been having about the specific type of crowd that Wonderland gets, how we can't do the chaperone policy because there's so many of that like thrill-seeking age group of teens and young 20-somethings in the park. Um, those are the people that would want an RMC, <laughs> okay? Those are the people. Um, so I think we have the right demographic for it to be a real crowd eater and to get a lot of those people off the pathways and to get them to stop, you know, doing stupid stuff and wasting time and they can spend time standing in line for RMC Mindbuster instead. <laughs> just do let it just eat them up. That said, do I think RMC Mindbuster is what we have coming? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Me and Wonderland are on two very different pages. We might be in different books altogether. But I think if they did redo Mindbuster, and let me just go into, let me just, sorry. Let's back up a second. I did not script this video. I used to script my videos, you guys. I didn't script this one. So you're, you're getting unscripted Jasmine right now. This is going to be a wild series. I don't know where this is going. Um, I want to talk about why it would be blasphemy for them to get rid of Mindbuster when we now have Frontier Canada, okay? We finally got Frontier Canada, okay? Mindbuster was the only part of the original plan for Frontier Canada that we did get, okay? If they get rid of the only part of the original Frontier Canada, when we finally get the full Frontier Canada, I'm gonna lose it, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna come in there with a picket sign and stand in front of the former Mindbusters place, spot, location, and strike, okay? I'm going to fly from Florida to Vaughn, to Mississauga, I guess, and drive to Vaughn, and I'm going to pick it until they listen to me. Because, like I said, I did the ride history videos thing, I did the park history thing, please go back and watch them, 
because I actually spent a significant amount of time on them. But it would just be such a mess for them to finally do Frontier Canada justice and then remove the only original part of it that we ever did get before it came to be. The only part of it that even survived the Paramount era. We cannot lose Mindbuster, guys, okay? But we can give it a new version, a new life. We can modernize it. We can give it a backstory. I'm fighting for Mindbuster, okay? And yes, there is a Dragonfire video coming. <laughs> if you know me, you're not even a little bit surprised about that, okay? So there's my spiel about the history and... Don't fuck with it. Don't fuck with it. Don't fuck with it. I'll, I'll come for you. <laughs> okay, this video is a disaster. But closing chapter <laughs> is what I think Wonderland is actually going to do. One, just keep retracking Mindbuster until the end of time and like replacing bits and pieces as needed, which would make me so sad. You guys went to all this trouble to make Frontier Canada the amazingly themed part of the park that it is, the icon that we always deserved. And then you don't do justice, fix up, retheme, fully redo the one original part of Frontier Canada that we did get that deserves the second life that she has put in all of these years to earn. All these years! <laughs> she deserves better. Justice for Mindbuster. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, I don't think Wonderland is going to do what I think they should do. But I think they might give us something more like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train at Disney World. Um, which would be really cool. But then we'd be down to only one proper wooden coaster. Like adult-sized wooden coaster at the park. And it's a really bad one. <laughs> so I don't... I don't think that's the right solution either. And I know that all of the markers that we're seeing for the 2024 and or 2025 edition are all in the white water area. So it makes a lot more sense that we're probably going to get that mine themed ride in the form of um, like a big, uh, big long, f I almost, I'm trying to, I'm trying to avoid swearing in this video, guys. I'm really struggling. <laughs> I swear a lot. <laughs> Anyways. I think we're more likely to get a really long and themed log flume ride or, I don't know, a water coaster would be really cool. I would be fine with that. But regardless of what we get over in that area, I just think it would be wrong <laughs> to do what they've done with Frontier Canada, the amazing work that they've done with Frontier Canada, and not do justice to Mindbuster. So... What do I think is going to happen, <laughs> more likely, is they're just going to let Mindbuster limp along for several more years and they're going to give us something else in the whitewater area. So it's probably going to be, um, like I said, a log flume type ride or I think a coaster, like I said, that's like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train style, which I believe that's a Vacoma, right? Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, it's a Vacoma. I should have these things memorized, but my brain is mush, okay? I'm a millennial. S -s have pity. <laughs> yeah, I think that's more likely something like that or something like what Brendan's been talking about, like a mock spinner or something, you know, a little bit more cookie cutter. I really want a super custom ground up hybrid RMC Woody type of mind buster. And that's my rant for today. <laughs> So I hope you enjoy. Um, please share your comments below on what you think about this, what you think about Frontier Canada, what should be Frontier Canada's final edition, what do we deserve, and what do you think Wonderland is actually going to do, <laughs> and what other topics do you want to hear me dream and speculate about in future videos and get you guys all mad and riled up in the comments. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Also, I just realized I made it through that whole rant video, whatever you want to call this, um, and didn't give any of you context as to who I like really am. So for those of you who haven't been around Amusement Insiders long enough to see my old series and to chat with me um, back when I used to be on Discord a lot more, I will be on Discord more now that I'm doing this series. I've just been having some social anxiety lately, all right? So be nice and I'll come back. Uh, <laughs> 
But for those of you who don't know me or remember me, um, like I said at the beginning, I used to go by. You're interrupting again. Again. Sorry, that was my husband coming home and interrupting my recording. He's going to interrupt again. But for those who uh, don't know slash remember, um, I used to make ride history videos here on Amusement Insiders, and I have my own channel. As I mentioned, Jasmine Dreams is what it is these days. And on that channel, I post a lot of theme park vlogs and other theme park and travel related content, mostly captured with vintage and weird camera lenses. <laughs> so um, I've been friends with Brendan since 2018. And um, yeah, it started out my my vlogs and stuff at Canada's Wonderland and then have kind of like moved a number of times since then. And these days I'm in Florida. So I do mostly theme park content that's based here in Florida. So largely Disney <laughs> and Universal to come. I actually went to school for tourism and travel. So I studied theme parks, amusement parks, tourism destinations. Um, like Brendan, I spend a ridiculous amount of time listening to investor calls and doing boring stuff like that for funsies, doing research for funsies, basically millennial things. That's all. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video <laughs> and I will see you next time for another rant to get you all angry in the comments. Okay, bye.